Hey, this is uh, Will Chandler with uh, the handle of Guardian Fury on YouTube. Uh, I found my notes that I was looking for, and I'm going to give a brief uh, kind of expand on what I started yesterday with uh, talking about uh, my life growing up uh, in the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses. So I'm just going to go ahead and read from this and uh, and uh, follow follow me along, as Kevin would say. So my entanglement with the lie of the JW cult began before my first memory. As it happens, my first memory is directly related to the JW cult. At some point during my second year, my birth mother left my father because of her budding faith in the JW cult. My first memory is going to the front door of the trailer. I was living in to tell my mother that some man was here. It was my first memory of my father. From said point up until I was 16 years of age, it was unrelentingly pounded into my head that my father was either evil or the devil incarnate. The irony of my life is that my birth mother effectively married evil when I was five years of age. The monster she married ran the entire gambit of abuse. There were signs of said abuse before she even married the man. From my sister trying to express to her the danger, that's my older sister, we were in, to members of the family trying to warn her away from him. My sister and I had sleepovers at his house in the name of getting to know each other better before the marriage. My sister tried to protect me and tell our mother, but her warnings and pleas fell on deaf ears. It was excused away as her being too young. She is about two and a half years older than me, and she was told that she had to be respectful and had she had to speak nicely of him. This was said to be an absolute and direction from God through Bible verses and, of course, the elders in the congregation. My stepfather was very lucky with me as I was a very deep and hard sleeper. To give an example of this, I can think back to being five years old. It was commonplace for me to wake up in the middle of the night because I was cold. I was cold because I had rolled out of bed and was sleeping in the middle of the room on the floor with no blankets. The earliest sexual abuse that I remember is after much had already happened. For example, I might wake with my stepfather in bed behind me. I'm um, going to kind of, I guess I probably should edit some of the content on this. And let's just say uh, I was wet. And anytime my mother was not home for the night, I was required. Required. There was no getting out of it, no matter how I argued or tried to refuse. I was required to sleep in their bed with him. In my mother and stepfather's marriage bed, I was required to sleep in it with my stepfather whenever my mother would be out of town. And, of course, this was our, our secret, is a phrase that was used. And your mother doesn't need to know about this. And the older I got, the more I was bribed to keep it that way. My mother was often out of town for the weekend to stay with her parents. Mark, my stepfather, never once, to my recollection, visited or went for the weekend to my maternal grandparents' home. There was much marital strain between the two of them, which aided in him in alone time with me. I even remember him finding us, my mother, my sister, and me, in the parking lot of a grocery store after one of the Sunday morning meetings. They had apparently had a huge fight after, after the church, and she left with us, my sister and I, uh, to go to the grocery store and then to go on from there to her parents' house. Her parents' house, who are not believers, by the way, and uh, have always been opposed to the JWs. Um, anyway, so they had a huge fight, and then we, we left. And with my, I was with my mother and my sister, we were at the grocery store. It was me that was the object of the argument that I then witnessed in the parking lot of the grocery store. She, of course, caved to the biblical authority of her husband. That night, I was in their marital bed as she was at her parents' home with my sister. 
How much more of a warning sign do you need? There's our dog, Hershey. Hershey, stop. Yeah, he's he's giving me a warning. Uh, finding us so as to keep me with him while she was gone. Of course, no amount of warnings ever were enough, as she is to this day completely indoctrinated. All reasoning ability was brainwashed out of her long ago. To this day, she laments to me, I wish I had known. <laughs> well, we were telling you for years. Let's see, how do I put my incubator, as, as I often refer to my birth mother, how do I put her in perspective? I mostly remember her as obliviously absent, and that's to this day, as I look back on my life. Paranoia is also one of the most relevant words to describe her as I grew up. I could not use handrails in a stairwell due to the risk of viruses. I was not, it was not a suggested thing, but it was an absolute, a commandment. It was as if a burning bush had commanded her to pass along said restriction. I also could not use a water fountain. And for some reason, again, I could get a virus or something. Until the age of about nine or ten, I also had to go with her into the ladies' room if I needed to use the bathroom due to the risk of me being molested, even at a kingdom hall, mind you, in the men's room if I went by myself. That deserves a second thought and some emphasis. Due to risk of being sexually exploited by a sick, worldly man, I had to use the women's room under her supervision. Some of my earliest memories also involved knocking on doors to witness to people. I had to remember a little sales pitch and was required to participate from the age of at least five. Around the age of seven, I also began to give public talks at the Kingdom Hall. To back up a second, I just want to mention that I fight the paranoia she instilled in me to this day. Uh, it is an interesting turn of events. I am now most paranoid of what she could possibly do to our, my wife and I, our, my beautiful wife and my, mine, my children. Uh, I'm messing that up. And I, and I, I dared not even sleep in our bedroom when my incubator came for a visit for fear that she would try to sneak out of the house with our children. It is not in the realm of impossible that she would try this in her effort to save them from a worldly life in service to the devil. And I really do wish that last sentence was a joke. And I also wish our couch was longer. <laughs> well, while I was in fourth through sixth grade, I also had the profound experience of being regularly left at school for hours. It was devastating if I forgot my tennis ball, as it was what I bounced off the wall once my homework was done. It was sometimes dark before I was picked up. One of the two school janitors would sometimes wait with me to make sure I was not forgotten overnight. So why did this happen? My incubator was out knocking on doors. She was witnessing to the worldly people and had forgotten to pick me up. The one time I went to my cousin's house, cousins on my stepfather's side of the family, I was severely spanked. It was clear I was never to do that again. So back to the tennis balls and one of the only positive adult relationships I had growing up. Yep, my elementary school janitors showed me more love and compassion than I felt at home. Never once did they express frustration with me. If I asked them to get my tennis ball off of the roof, even if it was the second or third time that afternoon. My stepfather owned and operated a carpet cleaning company. Uh, for my entire time that I knew him growing up. Big surprise, right? Cleaning companies. This would allow him time alone with me overnight at times, especially once I was old enough to start helping and contributing to the family. All decisions were his and final, as this is the biblical stance of the cult of JWs, and my mother was happy to follow God's laws. Oh, I probably need to skip some of those. Um, details. I, I'm brand new to the whole YouTube thing. I'm still not completely sure what's allowed or what isn't. I'm not sure how much y'all want to know either. Um, just know that 
I was molested and raped from the ages of five to to fourteen, fifteen, fourteen, something like that. And so we would, uh, if we were overnight, um, it's just an account of uh, one time at a a hotel we were cleaning overnight, which I was required to stay with them, even though it wasn't that far from home. Um, it was like a 30 minute drive, but of course we stayed overnight there to make better use of our time. Um, more like so he could have time alone with me to do whatever he wanted. Uh, anyway, so next paragraph, the abuse included and encompassed far more than just sexual. It was also physical, psychological, emotional. I was belittled and beaten down for anything. There was also no sparing of the rod during my childhood. I was an adult before I would even sing a song out loud outside of required singing by all of Kingdom Hall due to how I was belittled by my stepfather and mercilessly made fun of me to others when I would sing aloud with a song or just to myself. Mark also had some friends that joined in the forms of abuse other than sexual. At the age of 12, one of his friends dislocated my right shoulder, tearing some tendons and ligaments when he was angered during horseplay that he initiated. The man's wife apologized to me. He never did. This man that did this was also a ministerial servant in our kingdom hall. Of course, my stepfather was also a ministerial servant. Imagine that. Jehovah's Witness leadership, who also happened to be abusive perverts. Big surprise to everyone, I'm sure. Let's see. Well, from the ages of 5 to 12, uh, we lived in Maine. I, I recall a number of uh, scandalous events that that rocked the Kingdom Hall during this time. Uh, of course, mind you, the secular authorities were not involved. All things were handled in-house. And surprise, surprise, what were these scandals? They were all involved child abuse, mostly of a sexual nature. It was spoken of in hushed tones, as serious discipline could be imposed if found to be gossiping of such things. Much of this came out of the uh, of the shadows. I remember hearing things, um, stuff kind of clicked into place as I got older and understood more of the world. Um, so during the autumn of 91, we moved uh, where the, to where the need was great. And of course, my right arm was in a sling because of my shoulder being torn out of out of joint by the Jehovah's Witness ministerial servant. And uh, so we moved down to Vernon, Texas, where the need was great. And uh, we did this. Of course, that was, that was the guys serving where the need was great. But was that truly the reason? The answer is a resounding no. For just a little more background, I'll mention the woman's place in this cult parading itself as a Christian organization. The woman is to be subservient and obedient to the man, especially if said man is her husband. In practice, it goes, Mark says that we move when my mother, the incubator, says, Yes, sweetie, can I get you a magazine and rub your feet? Of course, that sarcasm is a dialogue for a Leave it to Beaver style scene that pops in my head when thinking of how to describe the woman's place in the Jehovah's Witness organization. A real-life instance of the skewing of roles of man versus woman in this cult happened to be a number of times at the ages of 14 and 15 after I was baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. When meeting to go out knocking on doors, it was to be... <clears throat> it was to be structured. Uh, we would read a few scriptures, discuss them, pray, divvy up who goes with whom, and where to acquire more cult members. The second I was dipped under water, I was in authority over my own mother and any other woman, period. When I was the only baptized male there at the age of 14, I was the leader that conducted the miniature sermon, prayed, and decided who went with whom. My own mother, my incubator, could not even pray if I was there. One bonus was that I got to choose who I went with, and it was final. It was uh, the only perk. It's all about perspective, right? Well, to get back on track, I ask, why did we move to this small, out-of-the-way town that supposedly had great need? 
Serving God had nothing to do with it. After some of the leadership in the Lewiston, or up in up in that congregation in Maine, um, after some of them got some of the the leadership there of the Jehovah's Witnesses got outed and punished for child sexual and physical abuse, my stepfather got scared. We moved so that if he found out, he would not be sub. If he was found out, if he was found out to be a pedophile. He would not be subject to the humiliation of his lifelong friends and family knowing he was a pedophile. This is not supposition on my part. In a rare moment of honesty, my stepfather admitted to this with the elders, myself, and my incubator present. I emphasize again that law enforcement was not notified of the predatory abuse of children by some of the leadership in the congregation in Maine. It was covered up. As uh, some may question, how could I know about the situation when I was 12 and remember it accurately? It, I'll relate some of, well, I can't go into too much detail on some of that, but let's just say that uh, I ran across an elder's daughter who would sometimes wake me up in the mornings. I'm not even sure how she got in the house. And uh, she liked to do some uh, dominatrix style stuff, which obviously as a kid, at 11 and 12, she did not learn from herself. Um, I mean, it, it's sick. Uh, think of, uh, you know, triple X rated porn, and you're going to be thinking of stuff that she was trying to initiate with me that she learned from her Jehovah's Witness uh, parenting. Uh all right, so back on to Texas. Uh, we initially get get down there to Vernon. It's about three hours northwest of Dallas-Fort Worth area, and it was in the early to mid-fall of 1991. I was enrolled in public school and finished the seventh grade. Uh, to back up just a little, I recall how amazing and happy life was shortly after we moved. Mark had dropped us off. My stepfather had dropped us off, and basically uh, we found a house to rent in town, and he went back to Maine for the next month or two to finalize the sale of our house and his carpet cleaning business up there. He arrived back into Vernon, Texas, pulling a small trailer with all that was left of our possessions, and that was on the 13th of December of 1991. Now, I specifically remember that day as it is my birthday, December 13th. We did not celebrate birthdays in accordance with JW Doctrine. It is seared in my memory as it is, though, to that point, it was the worst day of my life due to Mark arriving back and the instant oppression of his presence again consumed our family. It was Friday the 13th. We are not supposed to be superstitious, but seriously, I turned 13 on Friday the 13th. And, of course, birthdays are considered evil. But then if you look at, actually, go back even further to why is Friday the 13th considered unlucky and you're gonna find ties there to the actual roots of watchtower so it goes there's so many levels to that it was an unlucky day though for me also so we started up another carpet cleaning business truck mounted steam cleaning similar to a stanley steamer uh set up only when in the town in texas now the town had a population sign of 13,001 in 94. Uh, the border with oklahoma was about seven miles away near we're near a large bend in the red river we were about 45 minutes west northwest of wichita falls texas and about 40 minutes due south of altus oklahoma one and a half hours from lawton oklahoma three hours oklahoma city so on so on so we had a monthly route we went on from uh, northern texas around oklahoma and even to uh, parts of western arkansas so we'd be gone about a week, week and a half of every month doing carpet cleaning for large restaurant chains, movie chains, hotels, uh, you name it, big, big companies. It was also common for us to barter or trade carpet cleaning for hotel rooms, uh, you know, clean a few and stay for free type thing. You know, or exchange things. Uh, we would clean a, a, a gym. Uh, and. So every time we're in the area, we'd be allowed to work out for free and trade for doing their carpet cleaning uh, every so often. And so by the summer of 92, I was working full-time carpet cleaning with a family business, and I had started homeschooling. Now, I was homeschooling myself. It wasn't like I was being taught 
by my my mother. She was too busy knocking on doors full time. It was uh, like 90 hours a month back then for pioneering. And so by the summer of 92, I was working full time doing the carpet cleaning with the family business. And I had started homeschooling myself uh, that fall so as to continue full time work and large amounts of hours in the field ministry. So I was also full time pioneering. Uh, then also before I was baptized and, and after I was baptized, I was doing 90 plus hours a month of uh, knocking on doors as a, as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, two side notes come to mind as I read that for your sentence. Uh, working, of course, meant that I was with Mark, my stepfather. There were no other employees. This worked out perfectly. Uh, and his delusional desires for me and his attempt at grooming me into his wife, I guess would be the closest thing that comes to mind. There is a clear relationship between my age and the amount of time he made sure I spent with him. I clear, clearly remember realizing at the age of uh, 14 or 15 that in his mind, I occupied much of the space that I was reserved for a spouse. The second side note from a couple of sentences ago is that I was homeschooling myself. I mentioned that already. There was no supervision, let alone teaching done by my incubator or my stepfather. There was the occasional reminder in passing to send in tests on time. What a fine example of parenting, showing interest and concern for the development of a child. Now, if it was a product mass produced by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, Sunday or Tuesday or Thursday meeting prep, or knocking on doors in hope of finding an emotionally vulnerable person to indoctrinate into the cult, there you could find my incubator, my mother, and my stepfather. What a remarkable example to follow of the right priorities with the organization. <laughs> Sorry about the last one. A little, little flashback talk to being on the pulpit at a, at a district convention, right? So that's uh, that's what I have for... Um, I didn't realize well, I was still on 22 minutes already. Y'all are probably sick of listening to me and, and watching my, my fat ass uh, read this. So. I'll uh, continue uh, at a later date. If you lasted this long, congratulations, and uh, and thanks for putting up with me. And uh, questions, comments, concerns, uh, let me know. Uh, Y'all have a good one.